you. I am going to try, because this is a part two message. So, but I want to, I have some visuals that I, I want us to put up because God says no more broken love. Could you put up on the screen number three? Let's just, and we're going to do our scripture reading. You cannot talk about love and not go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, we pretty much at this point, even if you're a babe in Christ, you heard John 3.16. But if you really want to grow, this is where you're going to need to get, put this in your eye gate. Amen. 1 Corinthians. chapter 13. If you can use your microphone, Lord, I will have you to read that. So for some of you that maybe you're, you're, you're just getting used to this love thing, and I'm not talking about the filial love and all those other type of loves. I'm talking about the agape love of Jesus. When I say agape, unconditional love. Listen, if you get agape down, then you'll get the other loves as it is a be appropriate in your life, whether it be to love your children or whether it be to love another man or woman. But until you get the, uh, the agape love of Jesus Christ, you see what's behind there? What word is there? Loss. Without love, I hope they can see that from on the screen. Without, she said, okay. Without love, you will be lost. There's no way about it. That's why the devil try to fight you in it because he doesn't want you to know the agape love of Christ. He don't want you to know that you are a love machine. Amen. Years ago, I did a message that said that I'm a love machine. Uh, you, some of you guys remember that, and I came down the aisle. Amen. You know, we're getting ready to come up on Valentine's Day. And, 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 and that's not the, Valentine's Day is really not about the God love of Christ, uh, God love of Jesus Christ. But you know what, you know, I don't get so religious, but we, we'll take that. Take those days and you really show the God love. So Valentine's Day, most of the world, because the world, they knows that, they know that. Some of them not had an encounter with the God love. So we'll utilize that, amen. Um, Sister Amanda, you have my little hearts. Could you make sure that everyone in the room, including me, if you can get um, Brother Kennard, if you will help Sister Amanda, bring me mine, and then help her do the other side of the room. Do you think we have enough? Okay. But give him half. Hallelujah. Glory. I'm going to have you to read from the I like the amp, I like the amplified version hallelujah thank you Jesus do we have in we have the baby room monitor turned on so those of you may if, if you have a little rumbuscious one you can go to the one parent can go to the baby room y'all can switch out you still get to hear the message in here amen Glory be to God. So you have your heart. How about you um, take your heart? Like we got a little party going on. I said babies. I ain't say toddlers, three and four year olds. They 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 old enough for spankings. Sit down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get church broke. Hallelujah. My little my little grand sugar. I ain't tell her to go in there. So if her mother's in there with her, nope. She just get them little legs. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the thing. Danielle walked down the aisle. I tell you these stories because I don't want you to think it's something that is unheard of. Danielle walked down the aisle at three years old to give her life to Jesus. And we was in a big church. And I, every time I tried to run out to get her, um, Reverend Jackson said, leave her alone. And back then they asked you questions. See, that's why when your children are smart. They do all these little... All, your little children not use all the little apps and all that. He asked her the questions and he said, and, he, and she answered them. She said yes to them. 
He says, who am I to deny this little one, Jesus Christ? He didn't tell her that she had to get in the, uh, what's that, the class that they, most churches do, you got to go through the class. <laughs> Hallelujah. And back then, if you didn't you had to do that and get baptized, that's how you got to be in the choir. So then me and her was up there with our choir shirts on. Hallelujah. But at age three, because if anyone else can feel the Spirit of God, it's the little ones. If you get them, bring them into the house of God. So what? They fall asleep? They don't fall asleep. Their spirit man is still woke. Oh, y'all want to go ahead and get this picture? Go ahead and get this picture. Because at the end of the service, I'm going to get you to take a picture of someone else with their heart. Amen. And we're going to seal this. I'm just going to tell you how this going to go. And then we're going to seal this with the blood of Jesus. We need some up here. Okay, everybody up here. No, you, you're okay. Hallelujah. So you have your heart, and as I'm going through, your instruction is, is that I want you to write scriptures on your heart. And there are going to be several scriptures I give out, but then I want you to put an asterisk mark by the one that really means something to you. Amen. Some of you may say, all of them mean something to me. And some of you may say, you know what? But this week, I'm really going to work on this. Amen. Glory be to God. So when God spoke to, was speaking to me about this, and with the prophet gift, you have to understand that sometimes I'll have a sermon here, give it all to him, but then there's times I have to wait in his presence and let him drip it. And so as he was doing that, it didn't take place really till yesterday. And I said, I said, so what causes people to not love on the edge? He says, that's because they get stuck. And then he start giving me sentences and acronyms. So write that down, stuck. Not on your heart, write it down, stuck. So what prevents me from loving on the edge? The Lord says, it's because my people get stuck. So I say, what do you mean by that? He says, well, the S stands for selfishness. Selfishness prevents you from loving on the edge. It's a very deadly, and, it, and it's a spirit as well, okay? You got little children that you, they're training up, you know, it's not that it's something that children have, they're just selfish, they don't want to share their toys, but you're supposed to grow out of that. But there's some people that are still in their 40s and their 50s or what have you, and they are flowing with a spirit of selfishness, and it prevents them of that. So if you're a new believer, um, here, or even if you're a visitor, if you can, you can see um, Deaconess Kiera, we have those little foxes. See, we, don't, we let selfishness go run rampant because it's, one, it's a little fox that spoils the vine. You know, I talked about drugs and all the other stuff, but, but you don't see the little fox selfishness. He just running through your vineyard, tearing up everything, taking, taking all your little stuff, all your little fruit. And so there's years ago, I gave out to the congregation this whole little sheet, and we have it in the office, don't do we not? It's the little foxes that spoil the vine, and it lists all the little foxes out, gossiping, all those little things that we just, you know, just let run rampant because, you know, I don't do drugs, I don't smoke, I don't cuss, you know, I don't go to the nightclub, I don't watch pornography, I'm married so I'm not lusting. But what about all those other little foxes? So for the sake of the message, the first one is that prevents you from loving on the edge is selfishness. For the T, where's, where are my screens blank? They're doing some little training back there with them young folks. <laughs> That's good. That's Kentuan Blackstock. That's the one that, you know, he really, he really speaks. <laughs> Unless it's food or something that he, he wants. Amen. And so the T that, that stands for not trusting. Not trusting. Not trusting God and not willing to trust others. Remember, we, we're on this, 
What, what did God say? What, I asked him a question, what prevents us from loving on the edge? He says, my people get stuck. Do you, how profound is this? It's you. <laughs> it's you. Plain and simple. It's you. And to see, some of us struggle with, you're, you're so cautious. And then you can put in parentheses there, you know, you, that, that's, that's suspicion. And then some of us may be paranoia. They gotta be a motive behind it or this or that. You know, I tell you that 10th gift, there is no 10th gift, by the way. A 10th gift of suspicion, that's why I say it. This is what prevents us from loving on the edge. Amen? Or we're doing it poorly, like what the picture um, shows up there. We're doing it poorly. You know, we, we're doing it. But it's like, yeah. No. God wants us to get, he's going to get us to where we're going to have what? But that confidence in loving. And then we're not going to, because he says, what? No more broken love. And then the K for real simple. I want to get something. Ah, what am you know, Lord? He, he spoke to. He says, they're just not kind. Just think of that. People are just not kind. If you, even if you don't know Jesus Christ, you know some people that really they don't know God, but they're just good people. They're kind people. They're kind nature. You are. You you want to hang out around them. Because if if you if you just one of the attributes of love is kindness. And, and, and that's so over, that's so over, I think most people think that's like, ooh, that's so overrated. You know, it, it's so simple, but it's, it's powerful to do kind acts of nature. The, out of the word love, that means charity. That's the reason why you can see the world, they do, they understand charity, they, they, they'll give around the holidays and all of that. The charity, because what well, that makes them feel good. But well, God's trying to get us something deeper where you, you exemplify the love of Jesus Christ. Whether you're giving something to someone or not. Okay, yeah, you gave $1 million to an organization, but do you really care about the people that's in the organization? And then you turn around, and, and, and those same people, you, 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 you turn your nose up at them, but you felt good because you wrote your check, Bill Gates, to this here organization, I, 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 for Wales. But you're racist against the African American, you, you're racist against black people. But you can write a million dollar, t a million dollar check um, for the African people to, to get water. Oh, I'm preaching real good. That's not the love that God is talking about. Amen. Truth be told, you're just getting your tax write off because <laughs> you've got too much money. <laughs> So say, look at your neighbor and say, I'm gonna get, uh, I'm, I'm gonna get unstuck. Amen. So when we look at that, you, you see, I want you guys to see visually for the sake of time. S T U C K. We're gonna fix that word. You are not selfish. You trust people, and you are not gonna be cautious and have paranoia and suspicious, and you are going to be kind. Amen? So now put this clip back up there uh, with the heart that talks about um, loss. So we, we're not going to look like that anymore. Amen? We're not. Say, I'm, 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 I'm going to love. I'm not going to be lost. Because there should be no reason why you even, you, the, your emotions may tell you you feel lost, but you're not lost if you have really accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hey, the songwriter said, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Hallelujah. So let me just lay this right, this foundation, so we can grow up in the body of Christ. Okay, and if you, if you gotta write yourself a note, or if you gotta get another heart from a man and say, and, and say, God loves me in spite of me. If you gotta, put affirmations up around your house or what have because you struggle in that area. God understand that because maybe the background you came out of. But hear this woman of God. God loves you in spite of you. 
Amen? And, and you just, and the other part of that is, is, is that you're going to have to forgive. Okay? There's no way around it. You've been raped, forgive. You've been beat up, forgive. You've been misunderstood, forgive. You went through a divorce, forgive. You've been lied on, forgive. That's what's going to make your love just elevate. Shh. The scale, you will see the scale like the Lord is showing me, just the little hand is just going. Because you what? Forgive. You know, you're going to have trials and tribulations. And people are going to be people. Okay? Amen. Unless, unless everyone, see God, um, not that I've never been through anything, but God kept me. Okay? And because he kept me, I am able to love the unlovable. Okay? So you just got to know that if God kept you, and you're not one that went through a lot of issues to be broken, then he'll expect for you, if you would just love the ones that uh, the, love the unlovable. Amen? That don't mean you just tolerate anything they do, but you should have thick enough skin that it doesn't move you when they acting ugly. You just look at somebody, you got some people in your workplace that they just look mean and in a rattlesnake or what have you. You just, you know, now see, if I was in the workplace, I'd just be a little bit bold. Y'all don't do this. I say, I ain't got to go to nobody's job. I work for Jesus. I'll just say, they, they did something ugly to me. I'll just say, oh, I'm going to pray for you because apparently you have not been loved. And i just keep on walking. And they'll be like, yeah, let me drop that on you. Think about that all day on your lunch break. <laughs> Hallelujah. You just got to understand that. So that shouldn't take you out of character. And then sometimes God says, iron sharp and iron. If somebody really, you know, treating you ugly, you may want to look and say, God, what is it? Is it something I'm doing? Hallelujah. What is it about me that I need to, to change, uh, change about me? Because if, if, you, if everybody, if, you if you're a type of person and every time you turn around, there's like nobody likes you, that I think that's something got to be you. It's not the other people. I'm serious. Is everybody telling you that there's an issue? Then you need to go and get in the face of God and say, listen, what is it that I am, what is it that I need to tap into? Because I, I could just go with three. If I had three people telling me all the same thing, he says, out of mouth for two or three, I agree. But if I got 10 people, telling me the same thing, me and Jesus got to have a talk. <laughs> Hallelujah. That, that's, that's what it says, self-examine. One of the things in the KLC, and you guys can see Bishop Adam for this, the KLC is the um, leadership, and one of the things, a model that we use is called adapted, uh, using your adaptive skills, and one of the things is that we had to do is you go to someone and ask them, you know, how do they perceive you or how do they see you? And you had to choose someone that you did not know, okay? And you had to take that way they gave you good or bad, you know, because out, and we was there only three days. And so you imagine how hard that is. You go to somebody had never seen you and never don't know you, your background, but just you had to ask them the question, how do you see me? Okay? So, and, and I don't know any other type of way because if you're going to love, let love be authentic. Amen. Let love be authentic. And I get in trouble about this um, I, in, in, in my work, in, in the workplace because I'm just honest. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't know that you, you know, you're supposed to lie. <laughs> and so, uh, not that I was, I'm just, and my, my vice president, and I was like, I don't understand. What's wrong with the other man? He says, Adrian, they never seen you. You're just, you're just honest. You know, you're just, you're just honest. I wasn't brutish. I mean, I'm just, I'm not going to kiss up to you. You know, <laughs> I'm like, when I, go, when I worked in the workplace, I'm like, I was, I'm not going to brown nose with you to do this assignment just so you can, so you can get, I can get your pat on the back. I'm like, I'm going to get the same paycheck whether I take that assignment or not. Amen? But we have to love authentically. Hallelujah. Put screen number four up, okay? So you're, say this, say, say, I am not lost. I am found because I have Jesus Christ in my life. Amen? 
And you gotta have a, a, a talk with that. That's, that's rather your family, you groups, because sometimes we just wanna sit right there. My mama, my daddy, my grandmama, the white man, the black man, the blue man, the green man. You could have stayed out there in the world if you wanted to do that. When I came to Jesus Christ, man, I, I got signed up to, with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I mean, you can't tell me that I'm not a bad mama Jim. Hallelujah. And that's because I know who my God is. I'm not going to bow down to the world system for nothing. Nothing at all. You, the world has nothing to offer me. And they surely don't have love for you. The world surely doesn't have love for you. So why do I want to be a part of the world? Amen? Glory be to God. So here it is. We look at this, and this is what God is saying. He says, no more broken love. This is what God wants to get us at. And if you will stay with the word of God and stay with Jesus, this is where you'll be at. So some of you may be in these different categories. You can look at this, I'm just saying with people, because God says love God and love people. So you can look at this as you and God separated because of, of your, your love, understand, or you and your husband, or you and your children, or your people in the work, whatever it is, but God says we got to be here, we got to be whole. Amen? So he wants to come in and then you'll be able to truly love on the edge. Amen? So let's look here at 1 Corinthians 13. So that should be the first one you write down. You can read it from the King, King James. If you have a Bible, I'm not going to try to put that on the screen. If you have a Bible, you need to be following along or listen up. Okay? You should not be on your phone unless you got the Word of God um, of 1 Corinthians 13 on there. I just, one time, I just want an anointing that I decree that in churches when people are looking at stuff, they ain't got no business, that they phone just blow up. Amen. Just blow up. Bam. I know the, I, 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 y'all know I know the power of my words, right? Amen. I, 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 seriously. Because some people just need to know that God is God. You in the house of God, and there should be nothing else that should be more important then you hearing the word of God or you doing something that's God related. And I decree that as a prophet of God that phones just blow up in the name of Jesus so they can get a sign. You want a sign and a wonder? There it is, a sign and a wonder. And be the main people probably ain't no tithers, but they can go buy a $1,000 telephone. Anyway, go ahead. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up doeth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, and is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Amen. So that should be the first one that you have on your heart there. Amen. Let's look. Um, you can write this down, 1 Corinthians 16 and 14. And it says, very plain, four words. Do everything in love. 
Ooh, deep. <laughs> Look, that, that, that one sentence. Come on, I want you to, I, I want to cause you to think today. Do everything in love. Very plain and simple. Proverbs 3, 3 and 4. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. I'm reading from the NIV. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Mm. See, you're writing on your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. See, this is just a word of God speaking to us in reference to love. I rarely have to interject or add anything in here because it's the word of God that's so plain. So, you know, if you want to make a practical application, how would that look, Deacon Dale? Deacon Dale got a, um, a, a little thing around his neck. They got the word of God up. But what if you start walking around with this heart hanging around your neck? And, and you have on there Proverbs 3 and 4. Bind them around your neck. Amen. What would what what a change that would be? That, would that draw some attention in Walmart? Won't that draw some attention in school? Hallelujah. Then Colossians three fourteen, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. In perfect unity, which he says bind them all together. That's love, peace, and truth. When you do, do that, you do your, your homework. Verse 12, it says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercy. Look at that. Mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Amen. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Then verse 14 says, And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Remember charity? We see charity, think of love. So what he says above what? He said in verse 12, above bowels of mercy, above kindness, above humbleness of mind, above meekness, above long-suffering. And then he tells us what to forgive. This should be, now if I want, I like this his script. This is one I would write on my heart and have an asterisk mark by it. And I would put Colossians 3, verse 12 through uh, 14. Amen. Actually, if you want to just take that whole little section, it's 12 through 17 for that. Amen. Are you getting anything? Okay, we're we working the word today. Amen. I'm not here to make you shout. I want to see that, I want to see love, not look at you, I want to see love just dripping off you. I want to be able to see, I, I want you to feel a transformation taking place and being cognitive that you know what, I said that and that was not in love. Um, if you read it, that's right in the Amplified, but it says being touchy. Amen. You know, some people you just, you know, every little, you, they you look touching, you know, that's why I like to read the Amplified. We, we got to work on some of that stuff. I'm not saying that you're going to be perfect, amen, but we're going to get there because see, part two message of love on the edge is perfect love. Can't take you there now, but by the time you walk this out this week, you're going to be ready for it. Amen? Glory be to God. Let's look at, um, let's, let's, And I'm going to get this printed out to give to you for next week. Look at first. I love First John 4. Put that down for your homework assignment. First John 4. Read it in its entirety. But verse 16 says, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Why do we struggle with this? You, you got to answer that for yourself. And you guys got to be honest with God. Why is it hard for us to bear with one another in love? Come on, you can talk back to me. Jealousy. See, that's one of them little foxes. Mm-hmm. Selfishness. That's why God said we were stuck. 
pride, patience, impatience, all those, all, all those, all those things, okay? You guys are good, good pupils this morning. And then we go down to verse 19 in 1 John. It says, we love because he first loved us. Is that what the song just said? I was speaking with the praise team last week, and, and that's how music you li should listen to is to connect you back with the word. So although Ken Walker, oh, how he loves us. Well, 1 John 4, 19 says, we love because he first loved us. Because, and I want you to think of that. I want you in your place, you, regardless of where you have been or in, it, it says, I want you to meditate. This is a scripture that you need to meditate on. Because God loves me, I am going to choose to love others. Come on now, just say that. Because God loves me, I am going to choose to love others. Okay? Now, you may not like certain things that people do, but you still are to love them. You see, there's a difference. Okay? I'm, I'm commanded to love everyone. That's the commandment of God. So you can understand. There's no wiggle room in that. You are commanded by God to love everyone. Now, do you like the actions of individuals? No, you don't. That's something totally different. Do we understand? Some people mix that up. Think because if I like, you know how you're in school, do you like me? Check the body, yes or no. They mix it up. Do you love me? You know, but you don't have to, I don't like the actions of individuals that they may do, but I, I, I still love them. Amen? So there's a, there's a difference. Now, when, and then it gets to move on, you know, when people learn themselves to get this love together, then it makes it easier to love them and not just, you know, tolerate them. Amen? I want to, uh, Bishop Adam, my husband, I love him and like him. Amen? My children, I have a God pay love for them. I love them. That's a God pay love. Do I like them all the time? No, I don't. I'll be standing here lying. You know? <laughs> but the key important thing is, is what? I love them, unconditional love, which are, you know, certain family members and people. See, that the God pay love is unconditional. It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't matter what you do, what you did for me on yesterday, amen, and then what you don't do, me, do for me on tomorrow is not going to change my God pay love for you. Amen. If God pay love is, is that, you know, you may be nice on yesterday, but today... You're not nice. Because I have the God pay love in me, then I take the stand, you know, I'm going to pray for that individual. You know, perhaps they're having a, a bad day or not so good day or, or what have you. That's not going to change my standard for you, my, my love for you. Amen? Because I rebuke you doesn't mean that I don't love you. More so if I rebuke you, that means I probably pretty much love you. I, I, I really care about you. Okay, because people that I don't really say anything to, that means I, I really, don't, you know, because I'm a type of person, I just know this about me. If I put you in left field, pff, you, that, it, it's, it's over with. You know, I, I, I know that about me. When, listen, when I say I'm done, I am done. And that's in our discussion. And it takes me a long time to get there, but if I get there, I'm confident in it. I ain't buzzing. And you'll hear me say these words. Unless Jesus comes stand at the foot of my bed and tell me blankly, blank, blank about that person, I ain't saying jack. Amen? And that comes from a place of love because that means I don't went the extra mile, the extra mile, the extra mile, the extra mile. And then you got to understand there comes a point in time when God says enough is enough. He told them, he says, he told when the black, when the when Lazarus the beg, he said they had the prophets, they had preachers and teachers that told them, and me sending somebody from the dead is not gonna help them. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at First Peter. You may want to write this down. First Peter four and eight. Remember, I'm reading from the NIV. Above all, love each other deeply. 
because love covers a multitude of sins. Ooh, ooh, uh, uh-uh. Let me put a high. Ooh, let me put a little star by that. Mm, mm, mm. Vanja Smith said, "Put two stars." Come on, that should have made somebody jump up, shout, run around the room. The King James says, "And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins." You know how you got some people that you, they, they they real lovable and they mess up all the time, but you can't. And they mess up all the time, but because they're just so lovable, hey man, you just gotta, you know, you just gotta, you, you just go to, you know, those people. I just got okay. I'm gonna give them another chance. Okay, I'm gonna give them another chance. You know, I'm gonna give, you know, you know. <laughs> I don't let y'all know my secret now. Okay. Hey man, that was First Peter four and eight. And then Ephesians 3, 16 and 17. This is a prayer. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts. Amen. Dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love. Oh, my God, that deserves three stars. That's a prayer that you can pray. If you struggle in the area of love, I just gave you a prayer. Amen? Ephesians 3. We in Bible school. Tell Bishop we had Bible school. Ephesians 3, 16 and 17. Look what the King James say. That he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Look at that, grounded in love. Come on, that's, I, I'm, I'm going to have to, I sold my love on the Ed seed. Well, I, give me an envelope, I need to put a, I need to sow a seed on it. Give me a real envelope, I'm going to put some, I'm, I'm not doing no pitch, but I got some cash in my purse. You can dig in my purse, that little black. Give me an envelope. That, see, that's going to be my, I'm going to be, because what I'm laying hold of here, I'm just showing y'all how, how you work the word with God. What, you, what I have hold of is that I'm looking at, I'm going to be grounded. Amen. My, I'm going to be grounded, and I'm going to be established in love. End of discussion, that's a done deal. So then now I allow the Holy Spirit because I'm now sowing seed, I have taken it by faith because anointing here is so thick that it don't take me a couple of days or weeks to grab this in my heart. It's been anchored. It's there. I feel it. I feel it. So then I'm going to seal it with this seed. Look at my um, black purse there. See how, how much, see if I got five or ten in there. Amen. And then, and then from that point on, when I hear God speak to me again, I probably, it may be a year from now, two years from now, I'll, Put it in there. But I'm going to be walking in this here thing. Amen. And then I'm going to be praying it. Hallelujah. Look at Romans 12 and 9. And we get ready to wrap it up. Hallelujah. Romans 12 and 9. It says, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. My God, world, system, and by your Christ. If we were just, even if you didn't know Jesus, if you would just hate what is evil and cling to what is good, the world would be a better place. But we have nowadays that people love evil. They cling to that is evil and they avoid what that is, that is good. Come on, shake yourself out. Say, shake, come on, shake yourself. I see some of y'all maybe struggling a little bit. Amen. Struggle. Come on, you're you going to get this love stuff down. Amen. Yeah, you, you, I'm not getting ready to make you run and shout around the church and all that stuff. You get this right here, you're going to be sufficient. Hallelujah. And if you, and if you listen, if you get it now, because God's going to come back and talk to us some type of way later on in the year or next year or what have you. But you'll be like, mm-hmm, I'm giving myself a check. I was at a five when prophets did it at the beginning of the year. I'm at an eight now, baby. Who, who can I help? Girl, you, you struggling? Let me help you. You, you. Girl, I used to be there, you know. That's what God wants. Pastor's on, Bishop is on this here. Thing. He's on this here about discipleship. We need some love disciples. Amen. I need some love disciples, people that walk in love, that's able to walk through with the, with the unbroken, with the downtrodden. Amen. Not going to get 
because they didn't, you know, didn't smell good, it's going to disturb you, or they still at a certain place. How was I able to stand out there with four thugs, smoking cigarettes, and they had beer? The other one, they, one was so, he, they put one over there. One guy sitting there had tattoos from his face all over, all the way down his whole body. And he was one sitting there, he was listening attentively because I was really dealing with that one that talk about, you know, he didn't know, you know, he didn't know Jesus or this, you know, he's all messed up, you know. And he said, where are you from? I said, I know you know that I'm not from Kansas City. And so that's when I first got on the scene. And so God knew to send me over. He couldn't have sent, Mrs. Smith went there, but Mrs. Smith, and I didn't even know it, went there with a purpose just telling them that what she was doing up there. But God sent me by there because he knew I got one that you, I got some thugs. And you know what I said? I, I, put, I put my trump card. I said, um, I'm from Miami, Florida, the poke and bean projects of Liberty City. You can see they said, I want to let you know, don't let this car and my clothes and my good looks fool you. So I had them attention at that point. And you know what he said? I said, and I'm, I said, I said, you see what type of car I drive, so you must be know I'm not that bougie if I'm down here talking to you. See, I don't have an issue with thugs. I come right down in your lane. Hallelujah. He said, he said, I said when that car rolled by here, that I said, that's a nice car. And I said, and, and I said, go thunk it. And then I'm right here talking to you. Let him did his, and I said, once again, because he was trying to give me his debate, I said, y'all believe the way he believed? Uh-uh, nah, man, we, we ain't with that with him. <laughs> I said, because I told, because they heard that statement, if you die today, and I said, well, gentlemen, I have done what the Lord has told me to do. I look forward to seeing you at church. Have a blessed day. All right, have a blessed day. So, I did what God told me to do. If they died today or tomorrow, if they got to hell, it wouldn't be because somebody didn't take the time and look past their outer appearance and talk to them about the love of Jesus Christ. See, that, that's what, when you have love. And I guarantee you, because nothing God does is by coincidence. That very one that was so hard, that had that shell up, he going to remember. He going to have his back against the wall. And he going to say, that woman. And that's my assignment. That's in your neck of the woods. That's my assignment. I'm going with my oil bottle, and I'm going to hedge them in with the fire of God. And, I'm, and the next time I say, I ain't going to have to get out the car, because they already done had an encounter with me. I'm going to purposely... When they out there on the spot, at y'all Avon spot, just call me. I'm going to purposely just drive by the parking drive. I'm going to say, Jesus coming back. Y'all ready? And that's, I'm just going to keep doing that because I already done sowed the seed. But you, but you got to have love because I started off because I just told you how I hate cigarette smoke. But because of love, I was willing to stand there with three of them smoking cigarette smoke. Him with his beer can in his hand, smelling like I don't know what. And the other one was so convicted, he took his and hit it on the side of the car. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the other one just stayed sitting over here like, nobody move, nobody get hurt. I ain't moving, I ain't saying jack. Because if this woman, crazy enough to come over here and stand in our presence, she must be with God. But when you have, see, see, that's that, loving on the edge. Confident in what God has told you to do. Love God, love God's people. Love others and love your neighbor as yourself. Amen? I'm going to give us one more, and then we're going to pick up here. Yeah, let me get, I got, yeah, let's see. Uh. I mean, they're all so good. I'm, I'm going to leave you with this so you can work on your love. 
First John 4, 12. Remember I tell you what your homework gonna be? First John, all the first John, and you're gonna see why. Look what he says. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Woo, Jesus. And he put it right there, last script. Part one. The King James says this, No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us. So, if you don't love, God don't dwell in you. So stop saying God said, because what God are you listening to? So let me tell you what I'm going to do, with, what, what I would do with this verse. When I read, you read all of it in, four, in 1 John 4, and then this one right here, I will go and read that in every translation. Let, for the sake of them, let you put this, let's, do it, let's see if they have this in the Passion Translation. We're going to get ready to close. Yes, son. We're going to close out with communion after. I, I'm going to put this, I'm gonna put this the song on. Um, this, on the video screen and how communion is going to be done. I'm going to lead you through prayer. And as we're going through watching the video that's on the screen, the music that we're closing out with, because what God wants to do, that when you take your communion today, no more broken love. That's what you still I'm not going to lead it through you. When you come down to this communion table, so the, the ones that's five and under, they don't need to be a part of communion today. Parents, if you got them five and older, you need to have a conversation with them and tell them, Listen, we're taking this communion. So parents, because you'll move a little bit slower, you go with your children, you go with them last. Let all the individuals go first. Because you're going to let them know we're not going to have any more broken love. I'm not going to have no broken love with you, and you're not going to have no broken love with me. Amen? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Could we put up on the screen one? This is what God says. Oh, wait, oh, oh, okay, what is this? Okay. No one has ever gazed upon the fullness of God's splendor. Janika, do you have to leave? Okay. But if, put it up on the web. But if we love one another, I'm talking to you, put it up on the web on your phone. But if we love one another, God makes his permanent home, ooh, in us, and we make our permanent home in him and his love. Hallelujah. An expression in us. Thank you, Jesus. Can I get all the ministers on this front row over here, the ministers on the front row over here, the, all the ministers to my left, The video that I wanted is broken. It's, it, it's about 10 minutes. It sh it'll be showing up nine, okay, on the screen. But let, before we do that, listen, give me number, number one. I want to show what God said prophetically. Amen. Game over. No more broken love. Game of broken love. Game of y'all understand that. Y'all video game people, game over. No more. This is where he, this is where he want, this is where we're going to beat from. Show me slide number two. This is where we at. Amen. A perfect heartbeat was going to lead us into part two, perfect love. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God.